Yeah! <laughs> That's right. Praise! <laughs> oh, what a joy! Thank you, God! Folks, <laughs> let us all give let us all give thanks and praise. It is right to give him thanks and praise. <laughs> Look, all the Catholic stuff is burned into my brain forever. And then every once in a while I think of it and I think, that sounds nuts. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give him thanks and praise. <laughs> <laughs> like what a what a nervous what a ner a nervous species. No, it's good. It's good. He's great. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> good, good job, God. <laughs> You're the best. No, another great day. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. That's a banger. A lot of great songs. What I like about the Catholic Mass is that there's parts that sometimes they say it, sometimes they sing it. <laughs> Same songs have so many different cover versions. Like in one church, they'll do it really old school Gregorian Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Then you go to somebody else's church, sleep over at your friend's house. <laughs> then I go to church with their family, weird. <laughs> and then when they get to that part, it's like all hippy dippy, like Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. <laughs> Like, this is mortifying. <laughs> if, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No monks were out there with their acoustic guitars. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings. Bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. <laughs> I don't want to know these songs anymore. How do you do that? How do you how do you unknow a song? I tried to think of a song. I, I visited my sister when she lived in London, England. <laughs> and part of my staying there involved kind of helping her out with her job, which was sort of taking care of these flats, apartments. <laughs> like the common areas, like cleaning, essentially. It would be like, you know, kind of vacuuming the hallways, but then also getting out the old polish and polishing up all the fucking brass that was everywhere <laughs> in this Mary Poppinsville. And so I had a, a Walkman with one cassette tape. <laughs> this cassette tape was Ricky Lee Jones. I don't remember the album. Isn't that funny? But there was a song called Rainbow Sleeves on there. A very sad song. It was written by Tom Waits, I believe. And I listened to that song. I loved that song. And I listened to it every single day for just about a month. And then I tried to think of it the other day and I couldn't remember how it went. I remember like one tiny part of it. Why do I remember all of Eagle's wings? <laughs> I don't want it. Get it out of there. This is, see, this is, what eternal sunshine of the spotless mind should be used for. <laughs> if you want to jettison some old song, you don't need any more. Oh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
<laughs> Welcome to Spontane Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. <laughs> 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 then I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like this time. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what a treat. I, I'm so happy. I'm looking at this guy right now. <laughs> Just with the goofiest smile on my face, <laughs> singing along to every hymnal. Right? And it, it's driving me crazy. And by the way, for the it is right to give him thanks and praise, you yeah. know how they would say, it, uh, give the Lord praise. It is right to give yeah. him thanks and praise. The response to that was, it is right and it is good to yeah. give the Lord. They repeated it again, <laughs> like for real. It was like, how many more times can we say? And yeah, also, <laughs> you're going to the same thing every Sunday and listening yeah. to the same fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was nothing worse than going to church with your friend's family. That's weird, sucked. right? Yeah, it was weird. It's so weird. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the hosts of one of my favorite podcasts. I get excited every week, now twice a week. Yeah, if you're if you're a, if you're a rich, which I am, yeah. premium subscriber. I'm one of those rich bitches you heard about. <laughs> Throwing shade, of course, is the show, and this gentleman, of course, is Brian Safi. Hi, Paul. Brian, thank you for being here. Thank you. Now, it's Safi, right? It is, yeah. Okay. Great job. Because I think I said Safi before, and I apologize. You know, a lot of people do, especially um, Canadian when people. it matters. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they also say pinata. They say pinata. They, I hate that. Paja Are you a pajama or a pajama? I'm pajama. Yeah, me too. Why would you say pajamas when you could say pajamas? Do you say aunt or aunt? I made myself say aunt. Me too, from the parent trap. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Haley Mills was the change of the game for me. And everyone in my family was like, who is this asshole snob fop in our lives who's well, I, saying aunt? I grew up saying I grew up saying aunt, and it wasn't until I, I got together with my uh, then girlfriend, now wife, who's from the South, mm -hmm. that I started saying aunt. And sure. I was like, you know what? It is better to say that. Yeah, it's nicer. Yeah, it's nicer. And it's spelled that way. And it's spelled that way. Yes. Brian, we understand each other. We uh, are simpatico. Yes. The parent trap. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, I have a question for you. This is from our previous episode's guest. That question is, which one of your family members reminds you most... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a unique question. Okay. We haven't gotten one like this before. Okay. It's very specific. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which one of your family members reminds you most of Denzel Washington? Wow. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to pick one. And I'll tell you what, I'll do, I'll do it too. I'll, okay. I'll, <laughs> so when I think of Denzel, I think of like gentle but firm. Sure. Um, handsome. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I'm going to say... I'm. I'm going to say my my grand... Does it have to be alive? No, I don't think so. Okay. But the Denzel Washington of my life, <laughs> specifically in Malcolm X, was my grandfather, Robert... Robert, but Bobby was his name. Bobby sure. Leach. Leach, L-E-A-C-H. Leach, yeah, sure. I would, Because he was all those things. Firm, gentle, kind, mm -hmm. handsome, mm -hmm. probably talented. <laughs> I don't know. He never expressed his talents. Sure. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see the, the latest. The re He reminds me of Denzel and Fences a little bit. I'll see. <laughs> and by the way... <laughs> and by the way, only that he's from the South and that's it. And all of a sudden this conversation seems so problematic. No, I would say maybe Fences. I didn't see Roma J. Esquire because maybe that would be it. But I you didn't, didn't see, see Roma J. Israel Esquire? <laughs> oh, right. Israel Esquire. I did not. Who? What about you? Who is the Denzel in your life? Well, Brian, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the Denzel. Now I have a big family. I have I have five siblings. Right. A lot of cousins. I do have a I do have a lawyer cousin. <laughs> My uh, cousin okay. Rick. Okay. He could be the <laughs> Pelican Brief. <laughs> yes. The Pelican Brief. Roman J. Israel Esquire. Oh, I see. Denzel. <laughs> do you think John Grisham was like all kinds of pissed that they cast Denzel in Pelican Brief? 
No, yeah, really? He was like really mad about it. And from, from then on was like, I get casting approval from this point forward. That mad is, about that. That's a bad look. Yeah. <laughs> Who's like, yeah, d- exactly. And we, I think we can all read between the lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say the, de- the Denzel in my, in my family. <laughs> this is such a weird brain. It puzzle. really is. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's. I'm gonna say my cousin Dennis. <laughs> is it like, because of the name? No, although <laughs> okay, that's. I'm gonna say in in terms of, in terms of just like the kind of bearing that he has, yeah, uh, the the demeanor. I'm gonna say in my family because look, we're all a, we're a very loud group of people. Okay, my my extended family, my cousins on my mom's side, my cousins on my dad's side. It's a lot of people. Everyone's very boisterous. Um, so he's maybe the the quietest seeming person who, but also can be very expressive. Sounds so like say, a Denzel. I'm gonna say this is <laughs> those are all the attributes you want. Hey, listen, if you have a Denzel in your family. <laughs> Tweet us at Spontanean Nation. And also maybe tell them because it is a big compliment. You I know mean, what? like absolutely you want to be the Denzel of your family. Don't you know? wait, don't wait till it's too late to tell <laughs> the Denzel in your life. <laughs> no, I waited till the funeral and it, it nobody it didn't register at all. It was terrible. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Do you have a big family, Brian? I do. Ish. I mean, on my on my uh, fa- father's side, a really big family. They're all Syrian and Lebanese, and so right. they they come in droves. Mm-hmm. Especially at, like we go to those like Middle Eastern conferences, or we're used to growing up. Sure, sure, sure. And so then it was like, oh, you're related. You know, it, that big fat Greek wedding thing of like you're yeah. related to. You have so many cousins and so much family. On my mom's side, less so, just because it's just like she's from Texas, had two siblings, and is a pretty small family. That's the same with my wife, who is half Lebanese, right? And her, on her dad's side, um, there's a ton of people. Yeah, and they're all mostly in West Virginia. There's a huge Lebanese right. population in West Virginia. Um, and she they used to have these family reunions. I think they used to do them every single year. Yeah. And were they so every intimidating year. for you? I, no, they stopped before oh, we that's got good. together. That's good, yeah. We the, the, the only encounter that I had, I had two encounters with it. Once was um, we had a sort of engagement party after we got engaged. We, and it was literally so I could go to West Virginia and everyone could get a look at me. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. That's how that it goes. It. Yeah. And, and I met everyone. And then the next time was her dad's 70th birthday. And so we went to West Virginia for that and hanging out with her cousins. Now I've, I've met m- most of them. I met once mm-hmm. some of them I met here and there, you know, over the years. And at one point we're at her aunt's house, her aunt's house, excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm hanging out with three of her cousins that are close in close to us in age. Um, and one of them, there's these three girls. And so one of them said, um, we were like just hanging out for a little bit. And one of them kind of looked at me Mm -hmm. and said, let's grill Paul. And I was like, you know, we've been (laughs) married for years now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not like the new boyfriend. Right. And she went, no, you're right. (laughs) Yeah. That's what happens though. Anytime like someone would bring a new girlfriend, a boy, it was truly, you would make an enormous circle around various Absolutely. rooms and it would just be two kisses on the cheek and then how much do you weigh? Right. What do you have to offer? I mean, it was like how so, seriously, weigh? how much do you weigh? You're too fat, you're too thin. I mean, it was just like constant, constant, constant <laughs> criticism, feedback, perfume and cigarettes filling up the room, <laughs> ta- ca- talking about their trips to Vegas. Like, I mean, it was really saying that I'm a great dancer, but I need to dance more Arabic. It was constant <laughs> criticism. <laughs> and, like, and by the way, but at the time it was sort of comforting. I don't know. Did you ever dance the Dobkey? Of course! <laughs> at every wedding! And by the way, the Dobkey is <laughs> Dumpkey. And I'll tell you why. Because you're just going in a circle. Yes. It's literally There's not a, a lot conga. To it. There's not a lot to There's it. Not to it. There's not a lot to it, but they act like, and then by the way, halfway through, you're like, I can't believe this isn't over yet. Yeah. It's a long, it's a long song. And the only person who gets any credit is the person leading it. <laughs> right. And the person who sometimes yodels through it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it. Yodels! I know. <laughs> Yeah, I, but I loved it when I was a kid. I thought it was so fun. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah, I was I was very disappointed. We had it on our wedding playlist, and it never got played. Oh, that's I was bad. very disappointed. Although my my, <laughs> we did not have the any cousins because we all have we both have too many cousins. Yeah, so it's just like immediate family and friends. And um, her father, who's Lebanese, yeah, he he checked out of the wedding pretty early. 
pretty early. Sorry, this was your wedding? Yeah. Is it because that, and I'm and actually serious. And also my wife, his daughter's wedding. Was there, <laughs> sure. was there any resistance to you being- not at all. Not at all. Not at okay. all. He's a sweetheart and he's never been anything you but You didn't let nice me finish me. my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say rude as shit. <laughs> but, okay, well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad he was okay with that. I may have mentioned this on the show before, but he, our first dance, he cut in on us. Oh, you have told me that. Yeah. To do, yeah, that's right, on your show. That is shocking. Yeah. And also, like, such a such a power grab of, like, me first. It was so crazy. Wow. Like, we started our first dance and, like, a few bars of the music. And then <laughs> I feel his tap Back on my quickly. shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't think a verse even got finished. And I was like, I, I don't know what the protocol is here, but I, I guess I'm done. And then it's the DJ just, like... <laughs> seamlessly blended into the father-daughter dance. Was it at all a relief for you? Because to me, I've never like had a, you know, I've never had a wedding ceremony. Right. That seems like the most awkward part in the world <laughs> is when a, a circle forms around the people getting married and you have to dance right. an entire song. Well, that's how my wife felt. She was not looking forward to that at all. And I'm sure she was relieved when it happened. I always love that moment at weddings. Oh. I love it. I, I think nice. it's a wonderful moment. And so it didn't bother me. Like, you know, there's that there's that showbiz thing, and I'm sure you have this too, that you're you you put yourself on display, but when it's a non-showbiz uh arena, totally. it's awkward. Totally. Like if you have to give a speech at a thing or whatever or sing a song, it's like it's very uncomfortable. Yes. But that was the one time I was like, I'm fine with this because I because I liked that moment so much. And I'm like, there will be other people that like this moment. <laughs> and it was denied me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Especially because I feel like you're in the minority of someone who appreciates that moment. And then, yeah, you didn't get it. That sucks. <laughs> minority. Well, I don't know. I, I'm, I always, I can barely look at the couple when they're dancing by themselves. Why I'm is like, that? Because I'm like, you, I feel, I, I feel so ashamed of not, <laughs> you. but you know what I mean? I just panic for them. Right. Because I'm just like, if that were me, if just I had to go out there and like dance with somebody and prove that we're in love, <laughs> like you really have to lock eyes and like, all right, let's see it. Like, let's make sure that you actually love each other. But you've seen couples where they're clearly like they're having a great time and they're, they're like laughing and kissing and I stuff think like that. I, I think they're lying. <laughs> I think they literally are like, laugh now, <laughs> smile. Like, I think they're like, oh, oh, really? Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. Did you? <laughs> like, I think they know what's going on. I think the conversation's not I funny. I think, I mean, I think it is so many levels of like. You don't think they're like roasting the people at the wedding? You know like, what? Look at that fat asshole. Well, Tina Turner did that. She what? had a room when she got married, finally got married in Sweden. She had told. Wait, Oprah, how how long? How oh, a few recently? years ago. Yeah, a few, <laughs> a few years, years ago. She just finally got married to that guy. Wow. Um, who I think is Swedish, and um, she said that <clears throat> she, the worst part of having had a, having a wedding was that she was going to miss a lot of it because she doesn't come in until everyone's seated and yeah. they've already talked and everything, and so she said, <clears throat> "Can we build?" <laughs> rich people. Can we build a window and a room to where I can look at all the people coming into the wedding reception so I can see? And she said, it was so much fun because I just looked out the window and laughed at everybody. <gasps> Isn't that great? Laugh Everybody. She goes, and some people, I was laughing so hard, I have to admit. And Oprah was like, were you laughing at me? And she was like, I don't remember. She was just she laughing. She laughed at Oprah. Yeah, for sure. I just don't laughed remember. at people coming in. Did I laugh at Oprah? I don't <laughs> remember. It was great. It was how I would want that. Wow. Yeah. I laughed at everybody. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? She was like, a lot of people I was laughing at, I have to admit it. Like, people get dressed up. I know. <laughs> In my head, it was a grassy lawn and people were in heels. Yeah. And so, oh, so they were just, like, just like stuck back <laughs> away. Yeah, because I don't know what she would have been laughing at so hard. But, oh my God. Yeah. Now, so you you are married, mm -hmm. but you guys did not have a wedding. We did not. You just did like a Justice of the Peace kind of thing? I mean, we did a classic. It, I don't think we ever would have gotten married. I'm, I'm a romantic. I, I don't think we ever <laughs> would have gotten married had it not been for like truly the insurance stuff and his premiums were going right. crazy. And that was really the reason and that we're crazy about each other. Right. But so no, we just went to Van Nuys. Don't worry. The chapel there doesn't have walls that go all the way up. So you can hear everything going on outside. <laughs> it was fantastic. 
Um, and uh, no, and by the way, no one at those offices is like happy to be there. So it's just yeah. like the whole time we were getting married, it was like Windows Six or uh, you know what? I didn't bring my checkbook because I thought you took credit. It was like nothing romantic about this. <laughs> It was it was the most unromantic wedding ceremony ever. We could barely even focus on each other because the conversations outside were so interesting. But yeah, so so we, yeah, it was it was the, it was the, and then we both had meetings right after. So it was, <laughs> we ended up taking a trip that was, I guess, sort of a honeymoon. But yeah, right. I remember when we got our marriage license. Um, it, it was sort of like we were married. Like it's yeah, very, right. very anticlimactic. Like, well, legally, this is the thing. Yeah. Like, and it's days or weeks before the wedding. I'm yeah. like, I guess all right. This kind of took the wind out of my sails a little bit. You know what's crazy that I found out recently? Apparently when you get married, because you know how like um, you have the option to change your last name to your spouse's yeah. last name. Apparently that option exists to where you can change your last name to anything. Like at that moment. Yeah. It does not have to be. It's just free for all name change. Exactly. It could really, it could just truly be like whiteboard. Like it could be anything. That's only because I'm looking at a whiteboard. But that, yeah. I mean, you could change your name to anything. I just found that out. So uh, my my opportunity was missed because I would have changed it. Uh, would you have changed it? What would you change? No, whiteboard? I used to hate my last name because no one could pronounce it. But right. I like it now. Now you're proud. Yeah. Proud of the Safi lineage. Oh, We've done a lot. My wife took my name, which I bet not at my urging. She wanted to do it. And it is a gigantic pain. There's to, to change everything. Yes. Do you have to change everything? Yeah. There's so many things. And she was going through it. And I, I just would never say anything <laughs> right. because it was not my idea. And I was, I don't know. I felt, I felt strange about it that she was taking my name. On the one hand, it's like, it's, you know, it's a, it's a cool old fashioned thing. You know, it's like a sweet old fashioned yeah, thing. Sweet. But on the other hand, it is like, well, I, I, it's weird for me to think of her as Mrs. Tompkins. Right. You know what I mean? And when somebody says that, it's strange to me. But I thought she still uses Haddad. She does. Yeah. Okay. She's Janie Had. Well, because she's from South oh, Carolina. Had Had. Had Had. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says Hadad. Had It's like Had Had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, she made it like sort of a middle name. Got it. Yeah. I see. Now, are you ever going to have a wedding? Or do you think that's it? No, I think that's it. Really? Yeah. Do you ever think about it? Never. And I'll tell you, it truly is, I think, because... um. Uh, I, I, but honestly, part of it really is, I, I, I would feel very awkward doing it. I really, I'm not even right. kidding. The whole that thing. really would be part of it. Yeah. I just, uh, it just isn't for me. What if you had a to be honest, none of it's really for me. What? And we, we, <laughs> we coexist very well and we're great friends and we're in love, but like, <laughs> it's not, I wouldn't say like we have the most, and we both acknowledge this. I'm going to stop talking, but everything is good. <laughs> everything <laughs> is good. I feel like I just started digging a hole where there wasn't one. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm panicking. No, I just don't. I think, honestly, all that attention on us is just would just feel strange. What if you could have a Tina Turner tower? I would do it, but I would still never come out. I would just... <laughs> just and I would watch people wait for me. <laughs> That's what I would do. you go to see, like, a mass at, in Rome. Yeah. Like, the boat, you're just, like, you're, you're miles away. For sure. <laughs> you know what I would maybe do? I would maybe do if the ceremony was truly, like, three or four minutes and then the party. Like, yeah. maybe that. Oh, yeah. Which you can absolutely do. That's true. You can absolutely do that. Yeah. We had a very, we had, our ceremony was very quick and yeah. then it was party time and everyone got shit faced. That's man. fun. <laughs> People just got shit faced. Fucking classic shit. We did Coke. You really did. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> There's something about the wedding party doing coke, or specifically the bride right, and groom exactly. doing coke at a wedding exactly. that is so so yeah. scary. You expect it from some asshole, yeah, there, sure, but not the bride and no. groom. Let's do some rails. No, that's so scary. Brian, I could talk to you forever, but unfortunately, that is not an option. I know. Brian Safi, where can people find you should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found and what would you like to promote? Throwing shades every Thursday, deeper shade of shades every Wednesday. Paul's been on both. That's true. In fact, both of his episodes of each is fantastic. So you can, and I'm at Brian Safi everywhere and we're at Throwing Shade everywhere. There you go. It, uh, throwing Shade, I absolutely love it. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't heard it yet, please give it a chance. It's, I look forward to it every week. Thank no you. No joke. It's, it's so much just listen to it, guys. Listen I to it. Start, it. start with my episode if you haven't heard it before. Yeah, okay? you should. It was a, such a fun episode. We had a great time. Yeah. No one's complaining. You were on cold medicine. I was high as a kite. <laughs> I had what they called serotonin syndrome. Remember, because I had that weird interaction. It's a crazy episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to find out more about the syndrome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. 
During the break, we will procure a location for our improv from Brian Safi. And then when we return, you're going to meet our improvisers. Stay alive. No matter what occurs, I will find you. I got a question for you. Do you ever wonder what it's like to be in showbiz? Trick question. Of course you do. I know you're in the flyover states. I'm here in La La Land, not the movie. Well, guess what? Hollywood Handbook is your insider's guide to kicking butt and dropping names. Why am I doing this as written? Here's the thing. Hollywood Handbook is one of my favorite podcasts. It is hosted by Sean Clements and Hayes Davenport. It makes me laugh out loud. It comes out on Tuesdays. It is a top of Q listen. Right? It comes out on Tuesdays, doesn't it? <laughs> I got scared for a second. Engineer Ryan tilted his head slightly, and I thought I was wrong. But no, it's it's a hilarious podcast, um, and the idea is that Sean and Hayes are these Hollywood insiders. They're kind of characters, kind of not. It's a great blend of irony and just hilarity. Here, Okay, here's the additional info, all right? Every week, host Sean Clements and Hayes Davenport have a great premise for the show that they definitely spend a ton of time on. <laughs> And don't figure out right before the recording. Okay, so they may have written this ad themselves. The show is so accessible and famously only takes about... (laughs) Famously only takes about 15 episodes to really get it. (laughs) Listen, I've been on the show a bunch. They bring on good friends like Claudio O'Doherty, Tawny Newsom, and Nick Weiger. They gave a pronunciation for Nick's last name. I guess they were afraid of how people were going to say it. (laughs) Fair enough. Listen, Hollywood Handbook is hilarious. Check out the episodes. Uh, If you've never listened to the show before, you've heard Sean and Hayes on this show. They've done a couple episodes, and I'll have them back again uh, because these guys really crack me up. It's always fun to, to play with them. If you haven't checked it out, Check out the episodes that I'm on. There's episodes that other guests of the show have been on. Um, you know, some of your favorite performers uh, have been on this show. Take a look at the guest list and, and just pick an episode, listen to it. These guys are hilarious. You got to take my word for it, okay? You got this is a this is a sincere endorsement. This is the last time you're going to hear any sincerity connected with Hollywood Handbook. Check out Hollywood Handbook and subscribe in your favorite podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. However you like to consume your PCASTs, Hollywood Handbook, it gets the official Spontaneous Nation endorsement. I'm not fucking lying. Ah, yeah. Smooth sounds. Welcome back, everybody. Guess what? It is time to meet our friends from the land of make pretense. Seated right next to me. Always a treat. Uh, that is a Paul, no lie. Paul PFT. Welcome back to the show, Sean Distan. Hello, Paul. Sean, Hi. Sean, your last name. Yes. People pronounce it different ways. Yes. Sean Distan. Sean Distan. Uh, Sean Distant. <laughs> There's like very little small variations. Um, but it is Sean Distan. D-I-S-T-O-N. S-H-A-U-N. D-I-S-T-O-N. <laughs> I think the first name is the one I have the most trouble with is because it's the U-N not instead right. of the W-N. There, can I say this? Yeah. There's too many spellings of Sean. Uh, you know, it, it gets ridiculous with the S-E-A-N. Thro- we're, we're up to three. <laughs> we're up to three. And then I'm sure there's like a fucking Gaelic one oh, yeah. that's got a G in it somewhere. Oh, yeah. There's definitely some weird one that's yeah. like A-U-G <laughs> yeah. or something. Wait, no, there is. I've seen that. I have too. Oh, I hate it. Come on, guys. It makes my life a living hell. But <laughs> um, it's fine because everyone knows the name. It's like it's not mispronounced. It's just misspelled. So it doesn't bother me that much. Who are the other Shans that you're aware of with your same spelling? Sean there, Cassidy, of course. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly who that is. I then there was a there was an NFL player named Sean Alexander. I believe Sean White, the uh, snowboarder. Is he an AU? I think he's an AU. I could be wrong. I thought he was an AW for some. You know what? He might be Paul. I, I don't fully know. I just call him the flying tomato. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just waiting for you to ask me who my Denzel is in my family. Sean? Because I have a great answer. We might as well cut to the chase. Who is the Denzel Washington in your family? 
Paul, it's my father himself. Really? I was trying to find a picture of him, <laughs> but there have been times in my dad's life where he has looked like Denzel. Really? And then there's also a funny like time like in his wedding era, like he was like 19, where he looked like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> He was so skinny when he was 19 and he sort of filled out a little bit in his like uh, older years and then has this like Denzel look now. Wow. And also my dad and his brother have this really loud laugh that I think Denzel has had sometimes, (laughs) which is fun. My dad does like, "Ah, ah, 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 (laughs) yeah, yeah. And it's uh, very Denzel. But yeah, that was an interesting question because I was like, there are many Denzels in my family. I'm a black man. (laughs) But there's the, but there's a certain indefinable there's quality. Right. There, you're right. If I were to say the indefinable quality Denzel in my family, there's a cousin and his name is Lionel. Lionel. Yes, and he's very sort of quiet, but also like can be big and mm-hmm. is like you know intense and gravitas. Gravitas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say he would be that. Yeah. Your dad got married at 19. Some crazy early age. (laughs) And it's funny because the two funny things about my parents' wedding video, it was in Jamaica, so, like, it was really low budget. The, um, the, like, credits in the wedding is a camera on, like, a piece of paper sort of scrolling. Like, it's it's a piece of paper and the camera sort of pans down through the credits. (laughs) And then when they're getting married, the, the person marrying my parents goes, I now pronounce you Mr. and Mistress Distant. Oh! Oh my God. <laughs> and it's a really laugh out loud moment because you're like, have you never done a wedding before? <laughs> That's the craziest or thing. Or addressed to say. anyone? <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. such a crazy. But crazy you know thing. what though? I feel like that should be that should be the term. Instead of miss it. Instead yes. of why what's better about Mr. Mistress? and Mistress sounds better. <laughs> And it, Mr. And maybe Mrs. it is some weird proper way that came through the English, like Jamaica way. But <laughs> right. when I watched that video with my parents, we all were a gasp oh, <laughs> because that's... it was, they were also so young. It was very fun. Did people laugh on the tape? I don't think so. So, which makes me think, I don't know, man, it could be a real thing. <laughs> it could be a real thing. Uh, Sean, I'm going to look away from you. Yes, Paul. To, lo- <laughs> <laughs> to look directly across the table from me. Now, we haven't seen her in a while, <laughs> and what a treat it is to have her back on the show. Our old friend, Shuli Cowan, is here. Hello. Shules, how are you? I am good. Happy to be back. It's good to have you. Got to get right to it. Who's your Denzel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's my dad. Yeah. Because he's, you know, got the kindness, but mm-hmm. a quiet strength behind it. Sure. Uh, but I have to say, I'm very obsessed with the idea of I could get married and change my name, no fuss, no muss. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because I've always thought I should marry someone whose last name is O'Dooley. <laughs> Shuli O'Dooley. Because then I'd be Shuli O'Dooley. Oh. But now I can marry anyone and <laughs> change true. my last name That's to exactly O'Dooley. Right. Do you think, how do you think that conversation would go with, the, with, the, <laughs> <laughs> with your husband? Where it's like, he's fine with you not taking his name, but then you saying... Let's role play it right now. All right. <laughs> All right. Sweetie. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited to get married. I love Me too. You I so love you. Much. Yes. Don't, 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 don't. You said I love you and <laughs> no, you just sort no, of I, dismissive I, hand. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you and I'll have the, the chicken. <laughs> well, we are at a restaurant. Yes, 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 yes. He will have the chicken. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. No problem. Thank you. Can we get some more bread? <laughs> of course. I'll bring it right over. <laughs> uh, I know that we have our big day coming up. Yes. And I can't I wait. You to know. No hand gestures. No hand gestures. I want you to know I'm going to change my name. You don't have to do that. I I want you to be your own person. You don't have to take my name. I want to. I want to, baby. You're going to take my name? I'm going to take a name. Hmm. I'm I'm not sure what you mean. I'm going to change my last name to O'Dooley. So your your name would be Shuli (laughs) O'Dooley? See, I laughed even when you said it. (laughs) And then my name is still just Denzel Washington? (laughs) <laughs> but sweetie, it's people will know we're still together. When I divorced my wife after decades of marriage <laughs> in a very public horrible situation. Yeah, yeah. I did not see this coming. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm willing to hyphenate. I could do Cowan O'Dooley. 
You hyphenate <laughs> your own real name. <laughs> Can we get the check, please? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Well, Shirley, of course, I wish you luck in that journey. Thank you so much. I just want you to be happy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Shirley, I'm going to look away from you. I understand. It's to look, time. It's time. <laughs> you know what's about to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to look away from you to look right next to you. Kitty corner for me, meow. Not going to do it this time. <laughs> nah, I got that. George Bush. <laughs> nah, I got that. <laughs> nah, I got that. She's back. Colleen Smith. Colleen? Yes. You know what I'm going to ask. Which one of my family members is Denzel? <laughs> That's right. Weirdly, everybody keeps talking about Denzel as this, like, quiet, kind man. But I think of, like, the terrifying, you know. Training uh, day Denzel? Training day Denzel. Mm. The intense Denzel. Um, so Mighty Quinn the, Denzel? <laughs> the fence is, like, you know, kind of angry, drunk Denzel. Sure. Don't want to give away the ending. Mm. Um, <laughs> he gets drunk. <laughs> So I would pick my father uh, because he was quiet and he sometimes, mm. um, but he was like a very tall, intimidating, and very intelligent presence. Mm -hmm. So that's where he'd be the Denzel mm. of the family, right. very learned. Do you think, is there, this is a good question, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Who in your family thinks they're the Denzel but isn't? <laughs> oh, God. Probably me. Yeah, probably uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we all think we're the Denzel of our own family. Yeah. Well, I like that no matter what Denzel you think of, it's still your dad. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yep. He's everyone's dad in a My way. dad yeah. wasn't a Denzel, I gotta say. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was He was very quiet, that's for sure. Yeah. He was just a little, he was just a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> he, was a little, he was a little quiet guy. My dad was a 6'6", six, six, like took up yeah. space in a room kind of Denzel. Is your dad tall, Sean? No. He was like normal height. He just was He's Denzel. And, and also, my dad was loud. Like if he got angry with me, it was yeah. like the training sure. day, like, why did you do your homework kind of thing. <laughs> so my dad was loud. Surely, is your dad tall? Uh, he was 5'10". And now in his 80s, he's considerably shorter. <laughs> considerably shorter? I might be taller than him now. Holy wow. How tall are you? I'm proud of five, five and a half. <laughs> wow. He shrunk, oh, wow. see, bent in half? What? Is he bent in half? No, but gravity squishes you down. That's scary. That's why your tummy pushes out. Is a lot of his body pooling in his ankles? <laughs> <laughs> Some of it, some of it. But I will say, I've seen him in a polo shirt, and he's in better shape than anyone I know. There we wow. go. Well, that's yeah. terrific. That's a blessing. Yeah. To have a dad who looks good in a polo shirt. <laughs> yes. Please. My dad's wish, got guns. I wish that for all of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. <laughs> During the break, you will listen to the ad. And then when we return, we'll reveal the location provided to us by Brian Safi, and then... We're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Hi, Paul F. Tompkins. I'm out here in the street talking to people about their smoking habits. Sir, are you a smoker? All the time. All the time? Yeah. You don't seem to be smoking right now. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, well, there you go. And how long have you smoked? Um, ever since I can remember. <laughs> Real... <laughs> Like your earliest memory is smoking? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I remember just waking up and then next thing I know, I had a cigarette in my hand. It's, it's been that way ever since. How, how old would you say when you first started smoking? Um, well, the first time I remember smoking, um, I was 13. Okay. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> is that your earliest memory? Yeah. Or do you got cigarettes for me? I, I do not have cigarettes for you. We're asking people about their smoking habits. Are you worried that smoking can uh, de be a detriment to your health? Um, I, I think if I don't smoke, I, it'll be a detriment. Oh, you're going the other way. Yeah. Where you sh you have to smoke all the time or else something bad will happen. If I, I don't, like I said, I early remember when I was 13. And so like I wasn't smoking before then. So I feel like if I don't... St if I if I stop smoking now, I won't. My memories will be gone. What's the longest stretch you've gone without smoking? Um, right when you walked up to me, <laughs> like when I didn't have one. And would you consider trying a nicotine patch in lieu of cigarettes? Oh, oh, okay. But I, if I tried it, I would have to get like you have to videotape me for a while. So because if like if it don't work and I forget, I need to be able to realize what I missed. 
Are you a werewolf? Am I, am I a werewolf? Yeah. I could be. I don't remember. Mm, that's fair. Oh, the cigarette's out. Oh, oh. <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> Sir, have you considered trying nicotine gum? No. Would you consider it? Give, give me, give me some. Oh, I don't have any. That's just. Wait, what? Yeah, I. I <laughs> Why did we do this interview at midnight with a full boat? Oh, welcome back. I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, we got our location from Brian Safi. We're ready to do our improv, but first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene where we need to travel into the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we go into the past, we'll use this flashback sound effect. Now, if we want to return from that flashback back to where we were or go further into the future, anytime we move forward in time, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, <laughs> this last button moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We are just moving laterally in time. We'll use this meanwhile sound effect. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. And now, folks, it is time to reveal the location provided to us by our guest Brian Safi. And that location is... Lens Crafters. <laughs> Lens Crafters. We take you now to Lens Crafters. Can I help you pick out a pair of glasses? Yeah, I'm looking for something um, <laughs> to kind of present a gravitas, something so when people listen to me, they believe what I say before I say a word. Okay, well, mission accomplished. I believe you already. Um, <gasps> thank you, thank you. <laughs> we have um, an array of uh, Kathy Ireland uh, glasses. Oh, I am a fan. Mm. I'm a fan. She's one of the wealthiest supermodels to ever exist. I just love a woman with a strong jawline. She, I mean, did you see her in um, Not the Mighty Ducks? Oh, I always forget she the name of she it. Hasn't been in <laughs> Not the replacement. For a while. Same plot, but unnecessary roughness. Unnecessary. But... Thank you. <laughs> sure. Oh, hello. Hi there. You look great in those Ray Bands. Oh, thank you very much. I'm blind. <gasps> oh. <laughs> So you're a regular glasses wearer, then. <laughs> That's right. How do they look? They look fantastic, but what do you care? Right. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Vivian. Vivian? No, Vivian. Vivian. Yes, thank I apologize. You. Yeah. I thought you said something else. No, I said exactly what I said. And I said the thing that I thought I yeah. heard you say. Mm -hmm. Two N's, one E. Oh. Well, two E's overall, but one at the end. I see. And you? My name? Yes. It's Sean. Sean? Yeah. What kind of Sean? A oh. A-U? An A-W? <laughs> a A-U-G-H? Buckle T -H. <laughs> Yes, I'm buckled. Consider me buckled. <laughs> Guys, I don't want to interrupt, but you've pinned me between you and the wall of glasses. So I'm you just, gonna... just stay well, I, there. That's, that's news to me. <laughs> I was just going to cut through and let you guys have no, whatever I, moment. No, I want you to witness this. Okay. I'd like you to hear how I spell my name, too. <laughs> okay. I don't want you helping anybody else. You're mine. Here we go. Mm-hmm. S. Hang on. Yes, I'm bated breath. J. <gasps> oh, you're kidding me. A. Oh. H. Mm. U. Yes. W. Yes. Double E. Oh. A. Mm -hmm. Triple N. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no E at the end. Not anymore. <laughs> I illegally changed when I got married. You stuffed them all in the middle. I love it. So you're, right. so you're married. Oh, not anymore. Oh. I, I bet you didn't knees, see that coming. It's just oh, my excuse knees me. are locking up and I'm getting sort of lightheaded. I like Lean to against sit. the Gucci glasses okay. then. So, Vivian, tell me mm -hmm. what kind of glasses are you getting here at Lens Crafters? I'm just looking for something, you know, that adds a certain 
Je ne sais quoi to my quoi. Do you know what I mean? Sure, the, <laughs> the famous I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm, but an I intriguing don't I don't know. You are certainly intriguing me, Vivian. <laughs> Thank you. I'm keeping this glasses shucker here because I like it when people watch what I do. It makes me feel important. <laughs> Did you call her a glasses shucker? <laughs> I called her a glasses shucker. A shucker. And we prefer to call ourselves sales associates. <laughs> yeah. I don't shuck things. It's not corn. It's glasses. Uh, with whom are you associating? Uh, to, well, you mean who, which one of you am I talking to? Uh, no, you're a sales associate? Yes, I'm a sales associate for okay, Lens Crafters. So Sean, you, this is a great question. I'm, I'm, under the um, I'm under the umbrella of Lens Crafters. How would I know you're under an umbrella? I you're, can't see. No, I'm, I mean. That's very rude. <laughs> I mean, um, the umbrella. You're also being very able. Also, it's bad luck. I, I don't have a literal umbrella inside the lens crafter. Well, you should let people know that. You found your way in here, so I feel like you have yes, some level of skill that allows you to understand words and metaphors. Well, I'm only legally <laughs> blind, so it wasn't that hard. So oh. then you would know that I don't have an umbrella? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I knew you didn't have an umbrella. <laughs> I was just having a bit of fun. <laughs> hey, 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 excuse me. Oh, sorry. Hey. We got a problem out here? Yeah, we do. Is this one of your associates? Yeah, I'm, the, is... I'm the bouncer at this lens craft. <laughs> There's a bouncer at a lens crafters? That's right. Hopper, will you kick these guys Hopper. out? They call me Hopper because I hop over the cow. Oh. <laughs> That's Look right. Go. I don't believe that I deserve to be kicked out. I'm a paying customer. Well, I haven't paid because I haven't bought anything yet, but I will buy something. Oh, and I haven't <laughs> finished my drink yet. All right. Well, it just looked like you were pinning my associate here. Hopper, um, they were getting sexually aroused by uh, picking on me, and this man has a, clearly has a cocktail. Well, now, hold on. Were you two in the middle of falling in love? You know what? Oh. I think we just might have been. Oh, well, I don't, I don't want to jump the gun, but I think there's something there. I think Hopper has gotten us to a very intriguing place, Vivian. Hopper, you just hopped into bed metaphorically with us. Whoa, whoa. Oh, okay. Look, it seems like they're fine. Just sell them some glasses and let them fall in love, okay? Okay, okay. I'm going to go in the back and peel some more carrots. Okay. I'd Thanks, like Hopper. to use my AAA discount. <laughs> and okay. I have an NRA discount. <laughs> Are you still doing that, or is this one of those PC lens crafters? It's one of those PC lens crafters. Oh, boy. <laughs> we don't sell, we don't give things that make shooters better at seeing. <laughs> Even for servicemen? Are you against our soldiers? I'm you don't a, support our troops? I no. support our troops. I feel very terrorized. Are you triggered, Snowflake? At least you feel something. What? I feel things all the time. I'm not dead inside. Don't imply that I'm dead Hold inside. On, I think she was implying that she was dead inside. <laughs> Vivian, is, oh, okay. is this true? You don't have feelings? I, I admit I... I'm a bit feeling deficient. <laughs> All right, Vivian. So yes. we're gonna just do your checkup here. Okay, great. And um, Thank you, first, I start. Mm -hmm. I start with the reflexes. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the medical yes, professional. Yes, I am. All right. So let's see here with the reflex. All right. All right. I'm tapping your knee. Oh, that is very hard. You're tapping me very hard. Okay, but there's your leg isn't moving. It doesn't seem to be. No, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've just dragged a test. D do you feel when I'm hitting you here? Oh, I feel it. It metaphorically. W well, do you feel it f literally? Uh, no, thank you. How about this? <laughs> <coughs> it, you seem to be exerting yourself quite a bit with the wow, rubber I'm, mallet. I'm, I'm smashing your knee right now and there's no response. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Reynolds, so yeah. I, I looked over your <clears throat> x-rays, and mm -hmm. it looks like you have torn the meniscus mm -hmm. of your elbow mm -hmm. um, by over-tapping someone with a reflex hammer. Really? Mm -hmm. Dang, I was, yeah, I was getting in there, and it really kind of hurts. In the medical profession, we like to stop hammering into people's mm -hmm. joints, probably on the third go. Okay, okay. So do you want to hammer into my elbow? No, I, I, I have x-rays. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so if you just use a bigger hammer, mm -hmm. that'll save you wear and tear on your elbow. Great, yeah. great. So this is just a hammer. Yeah, just but a regular old hammer, ball <laughs> peen. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah. So, all right, let me swing this around. Oh, nice. This feels good. I did have an injury, so I'm just trying to up the weight, make sure that I could do my job. Exactly, yeah. This ought to get a reaction out of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Vivian, I got a new, <laughs> a new reflex tester. So this time, you're going to be able to feel it. Okay? Okay. 
Go, right. go ahead. Here we go. Hit me with your best shot. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to go for the funny bone. It's a little bit more of a sensitive spot. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> okay. Here we go. And. Ha! And you'll be starting when? The, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Vivian. Mm. You're just getting more intriguing <laughs> by the second. <laughs> Thank you. Her elbow is mush. It's a fleshy bag of mush. And your face is as well. Are you happy now? I wasn't insulting you. I was just saying that I think that it's... It sounded a little rude. (laughs) I'm sorry. Your elbow is a wound that should be tended to. That's better. So is your heart, dear. (laughs) Oh, she's got you. She's always got a comeback. Yeah. Hey, Vivian. Yes, Sean? You want to get out of this lens craft or (laughs) go somewhere else? Please. (laughs) <laughs> I would love to, Sean, but I have to stay and terrorize this sales associate, apparently. I, I was having such a good day. Submit. Submit to my will and we'll leave. Am I your favorite customer of the day? Say it. You're my favorite customer of the day. Thank you, Sean. Are you ready? <laughs> Hopper, what's going on out there? There, there are two oh, people. Just stop peeling the carrots. Hold on, I'm peeling the carrots. Don't, don't, yeah, I'm making a good. stew. We're good on carrots. All right, okay. I don't like too many carrots in okay. the stew. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Well, it calls attention to the fact that we can't afford a lot of meat. You're right. <laughs> hey, we're poor. Look, <laughs> now there are two people falling in love, and they seem to be terrorizing the people working the floor. But I, I let them fall in love because I believe I'm a romantic. Who's out there? Tina. Tina's out there. Yeah, and and there are some people that are. I guess falling in love, but Tina's, she's standing up for herself. She's doing I. Let me take a look out there. All right. Okay. Guy in shades Mm -hmm. and a lady with a droopy elbow. (laughs) She looks like an idiot. (laughs) It's hilarious. Go hopper. Come on. Come on. You built this thing so we can can look at people and laugh at them. She looks silly. (laughs) She looks dumb. (laughs) Uh, But they're falling in love. It's fine. I I think that guy's legally blind. Well, as long as it's on the up and up. Hilarious. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Tina, now I'm glad you could make it to therapy today. It looks like you've been crying. Your eyes are swollen. I uh, I was having such a good morning. Yeah. And and then I went into the store and I, I approached this woman and I was just about to sell her a Kathy Ireland. And you, uh, s- you spoke your truth, right? Yeah, I, spoke my, on that? <laughs> I spoke my truth. Good. But then this legally blind man and this woman terrorized me emotionally. Are you sure you weren't being ableist? (laughs) I mean, yes. Just by walking around, I'm being ableist. It's like I'm going, hey, I have legs. I can walk. I have eyes. I can see. I know that I should hobble myself, but Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't have the courage. You're right. It's all my fault. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Tina, when I said stand up for yourself, Uh I I didn't mean show off about (laughs) it. I know. So, Tina, uh, you've... How long has it been since your last confession? Oh, uh, it's been a while. Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the rest of the words to Eagle's Wings, and I'm I was so I'm going to need you to recite the words to Eagle's okay. Wings. And he will raise you up on Eagle's Wings, bear you on the breath Can you do the country version? Okay. This and he will raise you up yeah. on <laughs> Eagle's Wings, bear you on there the breath of dawn. Ah, very good, very good. He, he should be praised. Now, tell me what... <laughs> Tell me what's bothering you. Um, I, I, I tortured uh, a, a legally blind man by seeing, mm. and um, another woman who I uh, didn't seem to have anything wrong with her, other than the fact that her elbow was severely uh, mauled. Mm. Um, I made her feel bad because she can't feel emotions, and I felt my emotions in front of her. Mm. Yes, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, the Lord looks down on people who do things like that. Uh, yeah. I think you should do 20,000 Hail Marys. Okay. That's a severe crime. And the punishment should fit the crime. Okay. We're Catholics, so we suffer. Hey, Father! It, yeah, Father, yes. are you in there? Yes, I'm in there, yes. Am, are you? Is this true? You're not accepting the NRA discount anymore? <laughs> well, currently we're not trying to give people the sort of God excuse that they've had in the past. Oh, but so, what a PC church! All right, but that's... <laughs> Happy anniversary, Vivian. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Sean. I can't believe it's been three weeks since we got married. <laughs> I know. It's the most beautiful three weeks of my life. Mine too. Mine I too. feel like I can almost feel. 
I feel like I could drive at night if I wanted to. Do you want a bite of my Tina Turner tower? It has shrimp. (laughs) (laughs) Shrimp in the shape of Tina Turner? You bet I want a bite of that. Hey, guys, your waiter went on break, so I'm taking... Oh, no. (laughs) Tina. Oh, no. Tina, guess what? It's our anniversary. Oh. You have to sing the song. (laughs) Sing it. Happy anniversary. Can you sing it more country? (laughs) Happy anniversary. (laughs) Happy, happy, happy. Could you do it more folky like a Glenn Yarborough? (laughs) Happy anniversary. More more quavering in the voice, please. Happy anniversary. (laughs) No, no, that's more on it, (laughs) house. Maybe a little more craft work. Oh, yeah. Hey, I don't know. I don't know music. Ooh. I can't do it. Sean. Can we see the manager? Can we see the manager, please? <laughs> Hello. Hi. I, oh, oh, my God. It's Hopper. me. Hi. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's Hopper. It's me. <laughs> it's me, Hopper. <laughs> Did you guys get fired from your other job? Well, no. I, I pursued my, my restaurateur career, and this is a stew restaurant, oh, of course. Oh, yeah. You used to make food at the lens craft. So place. now... I, I hired Tina, of course, my friend, and wow, was there a problem? <laughs> well, it is our three-week anniversary. And, oh, uh, you did fall in love. We did, we did. Wow. Uh, Tina began to sing the, sang the song. <laughs> she began to sing the song. Okay. And mm-hmm. We had some requests as yeah. to the, um, the genre. Yeah. And um, she that, got to craft work and couldn't do it. I'm not that familiar with genres of country. I... Hey, Tina, can I come talk to you over by the... I don't want to come talk to you. I need to come talk to you. Okay. Okay. I got to come talk to him. I'll be back. It's okay. Hey, Tina. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say... Yep. I'm sorry. Oh, well, what? For, for, for me being an idiot? For me not knowing stuff? For me not knowing deep cuts of country? What? 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 What are you sorry for what I did? I'm sorry for... What I did, I looked past you and I saw romance and I realized that's all I wanted to see. But the truth is, Tina, I always loved you. Really? And seeing these two people here today in love, I, it just reminded me of that. Huh? I know I see you every day. And, <laughs> you know, we sort of work together, but they reminded me that I love you, Tina. I've been dreaming about this happening. I didn't want to smell like shrimp tower and stew, but... It's okay. I, I, it's okay. I, I should have defended you back at the Lens Crafters, and I... How much should you itch if you're allergic to shrimp? <laughs> I would say... Just, I should, I, I should have stood up for you. I should have been a better person. Did you say shrimp tower? Yeah, that's what they're having. The couple, they're having a shrimp tower. Oh. A Tina Turner shot. Were your cheeks always so chipmunky? No, they were pretty pretty <laughs> hollow before. Hmm. I look. <laughs> let, let me look here at their. Okay, reservation. Allergic to shellfish. Sent from their doctor. <laughs> their doc. Oh no! Oh no! A lot of people tell me I look like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> You know, when we first got married, I thought so. But you guys, now you're I, looking a you little... You guys, um, Tina. we got a note from your doctor, as is typical with restaurants. <laughs> and um, it turns out uh, one or both of you is allergic to shellfish, and you ordered the Tina Turner Tower, which is comprised entirely of shrimp. Well, we've both eaten the shrimp, so... We have, and you're the you only one... Do you seem allergic? I, I feel fine, but you look a little bit more like Biggie Smalls than I remember. Well, I've never eaten shrimp before, so is this usually a thing that happens? Wait a minute, does someone need a doctor? Oh, I'm, I'm a doctor! I'm a doctor! <gasps> I'm a doctor! Does someone need a doctor? Hello, who should I hammer? <laughs> no, we, we, he's got a, he's got a ball bean hammer. Do you need, are, this are you is my allergic? physician. Vivian, do you, Vivian, you know this doctor? <gasps> Vivian! He's my physician, uh, Dr. Pearson. It looks like you're having an allergic reaction to shrimp. Hold out here. Oh, me? Yes, yeah. Excuse me. I'm this doctor's doctor. Um, I was eating my carrot stew and I couldn't help but notice. Um, I don't believe you treat an allergic reaction with a hammer. Oh, what? You know what I, they I gotta say. say. I don't feel better. You yeah, don't. they so say sorry. when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Am I right, yeah, doctor? Right. <laughs> I've never heard that expression in no. my life. Wow. <laughs> it, it's a good one. No, it's not. Now, 
Oh. You're having an allergic reaction to shellfish, yet you're still speaking. Mm. That's good. Can okay. you help him, please? I love this man. I have a lot of pain in my ribs. That's pretty recent. Does that have anything to do with the shellfish? Oh, I think that's from being hammered by this man. That makes sense. Sorry, yes, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> we like to say in the doctor profession, the simplest answer is usually the answer. Occam's razor. No. Oh. Now. <laughs> uh, Murphy's Law. No. <laughs> now, uh, uh, does anyone have an EpiPen? I do. Like it, one it, of those swords? I have a Sharpie. Well, I have an EpiPen. It was in my hammer case. Oh, well. Please help my husband. Oh, we just got married. I don't want to be a widow. So We've been married for three right. weeks. Sorry, just weeks. use this on them? Yes. All right, let me just hammer it into you here. No, no you hammering. No hammer? Okay. Just drive it into a meaty okay, part. here we go. <laughs> oh, darling. My hand. There we are. <laughs> All right. But it right. seems to be helping. Seems to be doing better. Sweetie, yeah. you seem to be deflating a bit. My Do God. I look more like Snoop Dogg again? Well, you're sort of in the middle. Right now, you're at a Jay-Z level. <laughs> Damn, thank you, doctors. He thank you for... the exact middle point between Snoop and He me. is. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, doctors, for helping. Uh, my restaurant is... Uh, I don't want anyone to die in my restaurant, so mm. thank you. And I'm really sorry that this happened. And Tina... Yes? Uh, I'm supp- I should fire you. For not... Sir- the other waiter served them. Remember, I was just a... Oh, okay. Fire her. Okay. Make her cry. Let her feel. You know what? I will, ma- I will make her cry. Wait a second, Vivian. Yes, we're so lucky that we found each other at the LensCrafters. We are. We are. Is it right to deny someone else the love that we share? Oh, my God. Logic has won me over and almost made me feel. <laughs> I'll get you yet. <laughs> oh, Sean. Tina. I, go, go, Hopper. Get your woman. I am Tina, gonna, don't be a you. Go be get someone our girl. better. Yeah, be better, Tina. I am going <clears> to <throat> make you cry. Tina. Uh-huh. Let me get down on one knee here. Oh, <laughs> the universal symbol of taking a knee. I'm crying already. <laughs> You're saying getting down on one knee <laughs> is the universal <laughs> symbol of <laughs> taking a knee? Yes. You can understand that in Mars. At least the national anthem isn't playing. Yeah. Now, uh-huh. Tina, we've uh-huh. worked together for a long time and I've taken you with me on this restaurant journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Will you go with me uh-huh. to Van Nuys uh-huh. to the Justice of the Peace? Oh. Uh-huh. We'll be dressed sort of casually, ah, and we'll get some papers signed, <laughs> and then we'll both run some errands, ah, and we'll meet up at night ah, ah, and watch uh, The Walking Dead. <laughs> Dearly beloved, sign here. All right, here okay. we go. I don't okay. want to pay this parking ticket. You got to pay the parking ticket because you earned the parking ticket. It's a white zone. <laughs> It's a white zone for, it's, I, I have a, 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 I got my foot cut off. Let me Can I park something. there? I'm, I'm trying to register this, this beehive as a business. Who ate my yogurt out of the break room? Number 45. <laughs> I just want to keep my baby. Number 45. <laughs> Tina Alper, Vivian and I are so glad you could join us on our honeymoon, which is now your honeymoon. Wow. Welcome. Get ready to see the best show of your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Craftwork concert. <laughs> it's time to do one of our famous hits. Oh, here we are. Little <laughs> command. <laughs> me roll out the computer. Here we go. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is sadness, only joy. And where there's a red you. And it all happened <laughs> in a place called Spontaneous Nation. <laughs> Shirley Coward! Yeah. Where can people find you? What do you want to promote? Uh, people can find me on Twitter at Shuli Cowan, and I will be in the pilot of Lies on Demand on YouTube Red. LOD! LOD! <laughs> and I have a podcast coming out myself called what? I Know! It should be out by the time this airs. This is May 7th. May 7th. Hopefully it's out. It's called Splitsville, and it's a podcast about divorce. There we go. Why not? Ooh. 
join me in Splitsville. Lemons and a lemonade. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and let me ask you about um, opening night. <gasps> yes. Are you guys looking for a new home? We have a new home oh, for fantastic. April. We will be at the Revolution Theater. And starting in May, we will be at the Second City, Fridays at 930. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. That is good news. Because yes. the, uh, the, uh, the I.O. West uh, closed down not long ago. And so a lot of our favorite people have, have had to find a new place to do their shows. And so I'm very glad to hear Thank that. Thank you. Come okay. join us, everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, Colleen Smith, same things. Same things. Uh, at tw- Colleen Smee on Twitter. Colleen Murray Smee on Instagram. I have a podcast called My First Time. And I think that's all. You can see me at the Groundlings and the Joe Show on a regular basis there on Wednesday go. nights. There you go. Yeah. Sean. Hi. You can follow me at Sean Distin on all the platforms. And you know what? I want to plug. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want to plug an old podcast that I used to do because I don't have a podcast now. Sean. <laughs> but back when the Pod F Tomcast came out, I did my <laughs> own sort of version of it and I called it the Sean Cast. Oh. <laughs> is that true? It's very true. Oh. And it is available somewhere online. And the fu- I think the funniest thing I ever did was I edited myself into the audio of a Dr. Katz episode. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, the God. premise of the podcast was it was a podcast for just me, and I was probably one of the 80 people who listened Ugh. to it, but <laughs> find it online, listen I to it. I can't wait. It's so find stupid. It. Oh, my God. Everyone in their secret podcast. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ebbage Schletter. He's Ebbage Schletter on all the things. Go to EbbageSchletter.com and enjoy Ebbage Schletter's non-spontaneous work, because Ebbage Schletter is only the best. Thank you to... Oh, how do you spell Ebbage Schletter? It's pretty simple. Do you know how to spell a young lady? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what a letdown. <laughs> I don't well, know. Well, I'll tell you. It's very simple. <laughs> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. Now you. <laughs> she wasn't even listening. <laughs> E-B- no, wait for this. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta clear your throat. <laughs> Two, three, prepared. four. E b a n s c h l e t t e r. Yes, <laughs> she did it. Did it. Guys, my daughter's here. <laughs> <laughs> my wife had a thing, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks. I'm P.F. Tompkins and all the things. Go to paulftompkins.com slash live. See what's going on. Who fucking knows? <laughs> Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan. And then eventually, guest engineer Dana <laughs> for engineering us all the way to the end of the show. What is... We had like a minute left. Where did he go? <laughs> he had to get a pee real bad. Oh. <laughs> we had all that time in between. Hey, look, folks, you don't need to hear family squabbles. Uh, thank you to everyone for hosting the podcast. Uh, goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. Hollywood Handbook. Hey, guys. Uh, unfortunately, I have some bad news. Uh, my name is Hayes. I'm here with my friend Sean. Hi, I'm Sean. We're the host of Hollywood Handbook. Uh, they asked us to come onto the show and and break the news to everyone that the show you were just listening to uh, is unfortunately broken. Yeah, uh, it's really just one of those things. Um, every once in a while, a podcast fully breaks, and you can't listen to it for a while. While it's under construction, uh, sort of, you know, when they... Uh, shut down the roads and there's like detour signs um, so that you can still get where you're going even though it's not the way that you wanted to go. Uh, you can detour over to Hollywood Handbook, listen to our podcast yes. instead, just until this podcast is fixed. Our podcast is running and I think the podcast you were listening to is going to be broken for a, a, about a year. And honestly, when those detours happen, sometimes I find you a new You discover, make new little discoveries. A better route. Yes, and find like a roadside <laughs> diner that's so mm-hmm. interesting. The host of it are very smart. So listen to Hollywood Handbook. We it's a guide to Hollywood, but it's not it's even fake. really that it anymore. Sucks. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. Hey, 
everybody. It's Paul Shear. And I'm Amy Nicholson. And we have a brand new podcast called Unspooled, Unspooled, where we are watching the 100 greatest films of all time. Voted on by the AFI. We're going to be starting at number one, Citizen Kane, jumping to number 100 with Ben-Hur, and doing films that we've never even watched before. And we'll be talking to experts, whether it's a cinematographer or a stuntman. We're going to get behind these movies and figure out what makes them so great. So if you like the way this sounds, why don't you subscribe right now to Unspooled, wherever you listen to your podcast.